Good morning. It's a pretty day outside. I declare the Lord has really gave us a beautiful day. It's going to be warm, but uh, it sure is pretty. I looked out there this morning and I said, thank you. Uh, it's a pretty day. Uh, glad to have you here today. If you're visiting with us the first time, I hope you find us a friendly church and uh, come back and be with us as often as you can. We're going to have a call business meeting uh, next Sunday, so keep that in mind, and um, got a lot of things going to be going on, and uh, we need you here as we discuss this. Now, we're going to have, try to have an ice cream social here uh, Wednesday night. We got a, a sheet over there. If you could make a churn of ice cream or whatever, please let us know so we'll know if we're going to be able to do this. But we do have it scheduled, so keep that in mind. Don't forget to the sign up sheet. Um, me and Randy and Catherine and Linnell went up to Greensboro Friday to get pick up a church band. And I would say that the Lord laid that one right in our hand. Um, it is a Cadillac. Um, they, when we pulled up there at the place, I literally thought that that was a brand new van. I thought, well, somebody's got some money because <laughs> it looked brand new. And uh, it's out there at the back. And after church, Randy's going to, if you want to take a peep in there, you can. But it's, it's loaded. Uh, there's, the seats recline. Big air condition in there. The back, we've got plenty of space at the very back for luggage and stuff. We've got an overhead rack. Uh, stereo system, I'm telling you, uh, it's, it's nice. And the Lord really laid that in, in our lap, but we give him the praise for it. And uh, so we're thankful for that. We had to wait a while, didn't we? Yeah. And, uh, but God, God seen to it. And I am so thankful that we got that. Now we're going to get on some mission trips. We, we got some things we need to do. And uh, so we're going to use that for the glory of God. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I've got something to uh, bring up to you. Um, Catherine, if you mind, would you stand up and tell them about the First Baptist, what we want to do about the cooking and stuff? You, you know more about cooking. I just like to eat what she cooks. <laughs> And we're going to use uh, First Baptist facilities to, to do this at. So uh, be thinking about it, be praying about it, and, that, uh, and hopefully uh, we can get some ladies to, to go up there and, and cook. Uh, or men. Or men. Yeah, we got some men that knows how to cook. I, unfortunately, I just know how to eat. <laughs> okay? But please... Uh, let Catherine know that uh, you're interested in, uh, in, in helping us. I, I tell you, you, you have a good time doing that too. Uh, so please, uh, 
if you are interested in it, let her know. And so we can let them know that we'll participate in it too. Um, I don't know of any anything getting out. I know I look different this morning, okay? My button will not stay button, okay? And I, I sat there and tried everything in the book to get that, and it, I had a, what you call that thing that Janet Jackson had that time, a malfunction, well, that's what happened this morning. I do not like to preach in a, in a pulpit without a tie. So this will be the first time, okay? <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's why I don't have it on. Uh, but of all days, I had a funeral Friday. It, <laughs> the tie didn't come off and stayed on there the whole time. Wind blowing 90 miles an hour, it still stayed <coughs> on. But, uh, but today it, uh, it decided to, not to cooperate. But anyway, I'm glad I'm here. I hope that you're glad. I'm going to tell you something. Now, if you didn't come to Sunday school, you missed a good lesson today. Uh, that was a good lesson, and I enjoyed it. And uh, I know we've got some away on vacation and everything, and it's that time of year where a lot of people are doing it. But folks, let us get busy in filling this church up. Uh, you, you don't even have to look far. You've got family members that don't go. They're just lazy. They don't want to go. Um, at Bethel, years ago, D. Hawk said they had a black man to preach in the pulpit. Well, some of the folks didn't like it. And every night they took up off and nobody put nothing in. Well, the pastor of the church knew why they wasn't doing it. So he gets up there, D. said, and he gets out and he pulls a 357 and laid it on his pulpit. They will be an offering taken tonight and they will be money in it. So you may have to say, listen, pull out a, a 44 and say, I want to see you Sunday at church. If you don't come the following Sunday, we'll have your funeral. <laughs> so try your best to, to invite somebody. You know, if, if, if our church folks would get just one person if I'd ever member, it would double. And, and stay on them because really they, they need to be in church. And... Uh, I know it's tough. Just don't think about church on Sunday. Think about it every day of the week. This is the Lord's house. And let's see if it can be filled, okay? I believe that if we could fill this church up, that you will even feel better on Sunday. Um, I've been in some churches. It's, I went to First Baptist Hendersonville one Sunday morning, and you tell you how big that church was, 69 deacons. And it was packed. And when the pastor got up, he said, we want to welcome those who listen by means of satellite today in some island. I said, wow. Uh, so let's, let's fill our church up. I, I think it can be done by just simply asking some of our relatives to come join us. So keep that in mind. And before we go any further, let us pause for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I am so thankful that we are able to come to thy house today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We invite your presence and ask that the Holy Spirit takes over and guide every word, every song that's sung here today. Challenge our hearts so that when we leave here today, we can all say it's been good to be in thy house. And Lord, those that are away on vacation, we just ask, Lord, that you have your hand of mercy and grace upon them. And Lord, when they come back, give them traveling grace to, when they leave to come back home. Thank you for these that are here this morning. Ask that you bless each home that's represented here today. More than anything else, Lord, if there's someone here today who don't know you as their personal Savior, or they've drifted away, they're still saved, but they've just drifted away, I ask today, Lord, that they'll come back home. Forgive us of our sins, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Because of the ice cream social, we're not having choir practice because the social will start at 6 o'clock, okay? Alright, take the hymn books and turn to 149. Praise him, praise him. Please stand. <laughs>
sing it fast than they like. <laughs> Take a deep breath. This is Victory and Jesus, 499. Please sing it. <laughs>
if you have a <clears throat> copy of God's Word, I encourage you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. And if you don't mind, just stand one more time. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica. May God add his blessing to this portion of the reading of his word. You may be seated.
Thank y'all. Bless y'all's heart. <clears throat> About eight or ten miles up the road from here, there's a trophy case that's full of trophies. They won state championships, and they every year they just add more and more. I don't know how many conference championships they've won, but there's been many. And it's good when you go out there and you walk by that thing and you can say that I was a part of the history of this school. Whether you played ball or not, um, you was there when they won all these championships. It's a beautiful trophy case. And that's the high school out here, right here at Raiders. And I can remember when, before they became a high school out there that uh, all of our high schools had trophy cases. And all the school students and the parents, and they were always proud every year when these teams would win trophies. And um, it was a great thing. But did you know that, that Satan has trophy cases too? And you don't want to be in none of them, but I'm afraid that there's some that's in there, some's on their way there. And today I want to speak on Satan's trophy case. He's mentioned three times in the New Testament, Colossians, Philemon, and here in Sacred Timothy. The Apostle Paul was his mentor. Now that's getting in some high cotton there. He probably was a preacher, an evangelist, or a church planner. He had a great future ahead of him. His possibilities was endless. But all that he will be remembered for is a spiritual dropout. That's all he'll be remembered for. But Demas became one of Satan's prize trophies. Although Demas didn't go to hell, his name and bust is on his showcase. In hell for Satan to walk by every day and to see what he has caused here on earth. Yes, he has his trophy case. He's done great harm to the gospel. Satan and his followers, they have done everything they could to destroy the gospel. And they done it with the help of a lot of men and women who fell for the lies of the enemies of God. Let's look at this morning at Satan's trophy case. In Satan's trophy case, there are four types of trophies in that Satan's trophy case. And the first one is this, the real inductees it's too late for these folks. There's people that has lived their life and they had passed on and it's too late for them. They, they were already inducted in this place. They'll be there throughout eternity. Now I can remember when I was a little kid, I would walk through Rohan in high school and I would see these trophies that goes back way back yonder. Uh, yeah, they was sort of dull looking, but they were still there as a reminder of a team that they had, whether it was football or basketball or baseball. It was always there for people to remember the great things that came through sporting events. That was in the past. But there's people there today that are really, really inductees down there. 
You know, not too long ago, they had the NFL uh, Hall of Fame. And every year, there's a few men that goes into that thing, and they have a bust of them on a pedestal. And that would be there as long as possible. Those men, some of them has passed on, but they still been inducted there. But all of these that are in this category, they died without Christ. He was not their savior. And that's a sad thing. We've got Christians today that I do believe that don't take Jesus seriously. They may have made a commitment of something a long time ago, but they certainly don't live for him. And that's a terrible thing. But these people here never, ever got right with God. And that's a terrible, terrible position to be in. Marilyn Monroe, the great movie star, known for her beauty. Just a few weeks before she died, the Reverend Billy Graham was asked to go speak to her about salvation. He went to her house. She came to the door and he wanted to talk to her. She said, I don't need your Jesus. Well, in a few weeks, she was dead. I bet she wish she had him now, don't you? Because she's in the regions of the law, so there's no escape there. She'll always be there. She's an inductee down there. She was a real trophy, wasn't she? And then there was W.C. Fields, the, the comedian. He was an atheist. He made people laugh. He was a funny feller. But he too died without Christ. And he's there. I bet he's never told another joke since he's been down there. He's in the regions of the lost. And he'll be there forever. Madeline O'Hara the woman that they have credited to take prayer out of school. But I, I want to tell you, it was taken out of the home long before she got a hold of it. She would debate people why she was an atheist and she hated the Christian people. She despised them. And she died a horrible death. These men kidnapped her one of her sons and her granddaughter, and they took her out there in a field and they chopped her up with an ax. Now she suffered dearly, but she's also in the regions of the loss. She don't know suffering yet, but that's where she's at. She's an inductee down there. Satan's probably got a trophy of her. So she, she gets one for her hard work that she done here. And then there's Tina Turner. She just recently died. Her father was a minister. But she died as a Buddhist. Isn't that something? Now we often wonder what happens to her. Why did she leave the faith that her father had to turn to a Buddhist? I bet she's not dancing down there. And then there was Judas. Of all the people that should not have gone there, he went there. He's one of the prize of Satan. I bet that trophy that he, I bet it's a special place for Judas. He's one of the 12 disciples. He sat at the feet of Jesus as Jesus taught. He's seen miracle after miracle performed. And Judas went out and preached too. He even performed miracles. Keep this in mind. Satan can do miracles too. He done all of that. And he still ended up in the regions of of the laws. Just recently, I'm going to ask you if you know this fellow, raise your hand if you ever heard of him. Robbie Zachariah. Anybody ever heard of him? Tremendous preacher. I used to listen to him on the radio and he, he was just a gifted person. 
had an accent. And while he was on his deathbed, rumors began to circulate of multiple affairs and all kind of nasty stuff that he was involved in. And his daughter, who was sort of like his CEO, I guess I've got it right, she hired an investigator, one of the best in the country. She said, I've got to put this rumor to rest. Either it's true or it's not. I don't believe it's true because I know my father. He loved the Lord. In a few weeks, he'd come back and he set her down. He said, "Hun, it is true. Everything that I found out about your father is true. He was still on his deathbed. He never repented. He never confessed to anybody. He died in that state. John MacArthur, who is one of the most respected preachers of our day, was asked about that. Was Robbie saved? And he said, I'm going to tell you my opinion on this. He said on his deathbed, and he, he was on his death, deathbed for many weeks, he said not one time did he repent or heard that he repented. Even though he knew these rumors were starting, he said, I believe that Robbie Zachariah, with all the people that he led to Christ, I believe he died a lost man. He said, because he done such nasty things. He said, I don't think a saved man could leave this world without repenting. Now that would be a terrible, terrible thing. But if it's true, don't you think that's one of the high trophies he's got down there? He not only deceived Robbie, but Robbie deceived everybody else thinking that he was something that he was not. These were real duck tees. They, they're there. And they're never going to leave that place. And then here's another group. Real potential. Those that's on their way. Now these are the people that are lost. They may come to church. They may even play that they're Christians. But they have real potential of going to hell. The, the whole county is full of people. Like Folks, there's more lost people in Richmond County than there are saved people. It's terrible what goes on here. And these lost people, they have real potential of ending up in a devil's hell. If you are without Christ, you are engaged in risky business. You know, I'm going to tell you, we was coming home from Greensboro. I was sort of glad Linnell rode with Randy and Kathy because I could turn my radio up a little louder. And I was just having me a good time. And I turned around a curve and there was a terrible, terrible wreck. A camper, looked like a brand new one, had flipped over with the car upside down or SUV. And I slowed down. Now, the, the, the camper was turned facing Greensboro, and we was heading to Rockingham. Now, it, it, it looked bad. I, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, I said, Lord, I, I pray for whatever happened that these people are okay. Folks, it's risky business to be lost and out on the road or in a shopping center where somebody begins to open up guns. It's risky business to walk around loss. You could die at any moment. You're not promised your next breath. And some of us live risky. You could have a heart attack. You could get killed. You could make your wife mad and she puts a, a bullet in you. It happens, folks. And then the old lie that Satan and his Workers say, you've got plenty of time. Enjoy your life. And then when you get old and can't do nothing, that's when you get right with God. <coughs> Friday, I had a funeral for Coleman O'Neill. 
I like Coleman. He was a pioneer in the radio industry. And I remember telling that he had went to the doctor. He had, he had poor eyesight. He, he had shots in his eyes and he, he, he was pitiful. He said, Coleman, you qualify for a C&I dog. He said, what do I need one for? I couldn't even see how to feed him. <laughs> he was 95 then. He died at 96. But we don't know when our time's up. And if you without Christ, you in bad shape. Because you are on a list down there, real potential. There is a third trophy case that Satan has, not only real inductees, not only those that has real potential, but thirdly, real harm to these folks that had left their posts. Now here, in the fourth chapter of Second Timothy, it says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, has departed unto Thessalonica. I said he had potential, possibilities. But look what happened to him. Don't you know that broke Paul's heart? Here was a guy that Paul probably won to the Lord himself immediately began to, to follow Paul everywhere he went. Can you imagine the conversations that they had that's not recorded in the Bible? Can you imagine the lessons that demons learned just sitting there? But he left his post. He used to proclaim the gospel. He used to be active in church. Now you've seen people like that. I've, I've been in church all my life. All I've known was work in church. I've seen people that would get on fire for the Lord and they'll teach Sunday school, they run up and down the aisle, sing in the choir, even preach. But they left the post. Can you imagine the harm that is done when people hear about a preacher, minister, deacon, Sunday school teacher? When they go back out into the world and live? Look at the people that they may have won to the Lord when they hear about it. And you see, this is what happened to Demas. He went to Thessalonica. Why there? Why is that mentioned? At that time, there were 600,000 people living in that city. You could get lost in a city like that. I've been in some big cities. I went to Colombo and Sri Lanka. Had five million people, I think, live there. Up and down the streets. You could get lost there. Nobody could find you. And that's why he went. He was ashamed of what he'd done, but he didn't get the world out of him when he got saved. And we've got a lot of folks like that. They're out there in the world. They don't know it. They're, they're actually stupid to the gospel. They may have been saved, but they don't live for him. They live like the world lives. And it's a terrible place to be. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I've known people that I call holy rollers, okay? Never dreamed they would ever leave the church, but they did. I also not, know a lot of people that done that that did not live long. Dark dead with a heart attack, be in a place they have no business being a stray bullet, hits them and kills them. It's a dangerous thing. And I'm gonna tell you, you can go so far and embarrass the Lord, it take you out to take you out. You're not going to embarrass him and get away. I'm going to tell you something. If you live like the devil's crowd and you're a Christian, I'm going to tell you something. Before you leave this old world, I believe you're going to get a whipping. It won't be pleasant. It'll be painful. But you see, that's what happened here. Can you imagine every time Demas went by a church or seen a cross, can you imagine how he must have felt other things became more important than the things of God. Was it women that drove him crazy? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I know we've got you know, children here. But I'm going to tell you, this, this nation, 
This country has gone sex crazy. It has. Little, little teenage girls being snatched away, never to be seen no more. Taking them overseas. Putting them in all kind of movies. I'm telling you, folks, we got a problem here. You, you look on TV. That's all that you hear about to see. Everything's got to be sexual. Was that the reason he left? He got involved with women. I don't know, but he left. It said he was in love with this present world. And folks, to, we are a lot of Christians in love with this world. And then lastly, real deceivers, those that are leading multitudes to heaven, they have a special area there in hell. Because you see, the world is full of men and women that claims to be preachers, claims to be workers of God, and they're deceivers. The Bible tells us in the last days, and I think we're living in it, that beware of people like that, false teachers, that's going to deceive, it didn't say a few, did it? It said it would they would deceive many. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You turn that TV on, and they're on there. I want to tell you something. They, they, we, we've got those that claims to, you know, they, they have their big uh, podium all and all this stuff set up, and you see a bunch of wheelchairs over there on one side. And they claim to heal these people. Well, why aren't they running up and down the hospital aisles? <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? that? That's with real sick people. Why don't they run up down the aisles and go in those rooms where people are really sick and let them see them do their stuff there? Preacher went to see this guy in the hospital. <laughs> Heard he was sick. He said, I want to pray for you that the Lord will heal your body. He said, man, don't do that. I'm on disability. <laughs> They're that way. But these people who claim all this stuff, they're phonies. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I do believe in miracles. I believe that it happened. I do. But he tells us that we've got a bunch out there deceiving many. The world is full of false teachers. And I'm going to tell you, the reason why they're so successful, it's very easy. Because the people that they stand before of have lack of knowledge of the scriptures. Oh, they may come to church and they may throw their hands up in the air and they may shout the victory. But they probably can't quote three verses in the Bible. And that's the ones that these people love, love to take them and get them confused. What about you this morning? Has any of these things come across your mind? Are you just here to be here? You may have friends and loved ones that fit those categories. Now what are you gonna do about it? I'm, a, I'm telling you, if all the Christians in God's house would get right with God, really get right, love him with all their heart, with all their mind. And have you noticed how many times I already said all? Things would change. Things would change in your family. There wouldn't be turmoil in it. But as long as we don't do this, it's going to be turmoil. Now, there's a category I want to get in. <laughs> it's not this one. I want to be in God's trophy case. And I'm going to tell you something. On January the 4th, 1976, you know those little things you put down there at the bottom of a trophy with your name on it? Well, I got mine up there. Now, the trophy part, I'm still working on. I'm still working on that one. I want it to be a big trophy. It said, this is what Carl done to get this trophy. 
And we're going to be talking about that next week. That's the one I want to be in. And I believe that you want to be in that one. I just hope none of his trophies is bigger than mine, but could be. Could be. But, folks, that verse 10 speaks volumes of Christians today. Where are they? If every member that was physically able to come to Pine Grove, it'd give me a heart attack. And some of you too. Where are they? They in love with this present world. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this invitation. Speak to hearts this morning. Lord, there may be someone here today that has just lived like the world. They may feel like they've just wasted their time hearing the gospel. But it may be that you are speaking directly to them this morning. That this may be the last change that they get. Because it does happen. People can hear the gospel for the last time and it's over with. We're not trying to scare nobody into heaven because it don't work. We just want people to be aware that if you are a Christian, live for the Lord. And if you're not, you need to. Bless his invitation, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.